Hey, it's Allison from Computers.Mom here to talk about Google Docs, which is an amazing free word processing tool for creating documents and collaborating seamlessly with other people. But if you haven't used it before, even if you're a word processing whiz, it can be a bit confusing or even intimidating. So this video is for people who've been invited to collaborate on a Google Doc and just need to get started. Just a little background before we dive in. When you have a group of people who want to work on a document together, and they all have different ideas, what do you do? One method is to give each person a copy of the document to edit, but then you have to recombine and reconcile all those different versions, which is messy and tedious. An easier way to work is to have a single document that everyone can access and edit, no matter where they are. That's the idea behind Google Docs. Now everyone has heard of Google Search and also of Gmail, even if you don't use it yourself. What you may not realize is that Google offers a long list of other products, including Docs and Sheets and Drive, Google Maps, YouTube, Google Earth, Google Photos, and so on. Which leads me to the one big misconception people have about using Google Docs, which is that you need a Gmail account to use it. That's a big hurdle for many people who are perfectly happy with their current non-Gmail address and don't want a Gmail account. You don't need Gmail to use Google Docs. Instead, you can have a Google account. What's a Google account? It's just a free account you create with Google to access their stuff, just like you do with Amazon or any other site on the web. If you have a Gmail account, you can use that. But if not, you can create a Google account with your non-Gmail email address. With those basic concepts in mind, let's see how this works in practice. I'm going to use an AOL account for this example. The process begins when you receive an email inviting you to a Google Doc like this. First, let's be sure it's legit because hackers sometimes use fake invitations that look like this to try to steal your passwords. Were you expecting the invitation? Do you know the person who sent it? Does the text of the message sound like them? If so, then just click the link in the invitation email to go to the document. The document opens in its own separate tab in your web browser. It's a little different from using a word processor like Word or Pages, where the document is stored on your computer. This document is stored on the web, so you and all the other people involved access it through a web browser. See, the AOL email page is still open underneath in this tab, and the Google Doc is on top. But right now, we can only view it. We can't edit it until we sign in. So we click the Sign In button up here, which takes us to the Sign In screen. You need to sign in with the email address that the invitation was sent to. There are three possibilities. You can sign in with your Gmail address if you have one. If you do, you might want to fast forward to about the 430 mark in this video and skip the account creation process. If you don't have Gmail, but you have a Google account, you can sign in with that. In fact, many people already have a Google account that they created at some point. If you don't have a Google account, you'll need to create one. If you're not using Gmail, go ahead and try using your email address here, because that's an easy way to find out if you have a Google account already that you may have forgotten about. If you don't, you will see this error message, couldn't find your Google account, and then you can go ahead and create one. Creating an account takes a minute or two, but you only have to do it once. The process is very easy and probably familiar, but I want to point out a couple of quick things. When you type your name, Google will suggest a new email address based on your name. If you don't want to create a Gmail account, click here where it says, use my current email address instead. Then you just do the normal stuff, typing in your email address, creating a password, and you get to the verify screen. For security reasons, Google sends you an email to prove that you're the owner of that email address. So let's zoom out here, go back to the tab with our email. And when the verification email arrives, we just copy the code and go back to paste it into the other web page. If you're not big on copy and paste, you can always just write it down and type it in. Once you're verified, they ask for some personal information just in case you ever got locked out of the account. So you can lie if you're concerned about privacy, but if you do, make sure you remember what you said. And as usual, there's a set of terms and conditions that you need to agree to, which of course we all read super carefully. So finally, we're all signed in and here we are in the documents. So we should have editing access, but we don't. And if we try to click up here and request editing access, we get this weird error message. This doesn't always happen, it shouldn't, but it's a common enough problem that I wanted to include it in case it happens to you. All you have to do to fix it is back out and try again. Close the document by closing its tab up here and go back to the original email. Click the link, 
and sign in with your Gmail or Google account. And voila, we are in. We have all the editing tools up here and we can see where other people have added comments and text and we can type our own additions to this list. So I've already mentioned that this document is stored on the web, not on your computer. Another big difference from your everyday word processing experience is that you never have to save the document. In fact, there is no save option because all the changes you make and everyone else makes get saved automatically. So when you're done making changes, you can just close it. Last but not least, how to get back into the document later on. There are two easy ways. First, as you know, is to use the link in the email if you can find it. But there's another way that's sometimes easier. Just go to Google on the web. Make sure you are signed in by looking for your icon up here in the upper right hand corner. If you're not, of course, it will say sign in and then you just go through the sign in process. Now click the little grid of dots on the upper right corner of the Google page. Scroll down, click on Docs, and you should see the shared document under Recents right here. You can also use the search box at the top of the page to find it if you have a lot of documents. Click on the document and you're in. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave comments and questions below or suggestions for other topics you'd like us to cover. Click like if you found this helpful and be sure to subscribe for more Computers.mom videos.